So I have heard a lot, honestly, primarily from front-end developers, but just in general, early career developers that they feel like learning algorithms and data structures is kind of a waste of time. Like they feel like they're just being forced to learn these things just for the, the sake of interviews and for some of the more complicated, like edge KC, just puzzly type stuff. Sure, you're probably not using that all the time, but I still kind of think it's the wrong way to think about it. I think there is a lot of use cases for algorithms and data structures, even for a front-end developer. And I just wanted to show an example of kind of using algorithm thinking and using some of these tools you're gonna to learn by you know doing your elite code and, and practicing algorithms and data structures, which can actually apply to you know front-end work. So before we actually look at code, what we're looking at here is just a little Figma file. And I want to just map everything out here, just conceptually before we actually look at the code for this. So the idea of what I wanna do is, I'm sure, and I'm sure you've seen something like this before, I want to be able to take text and make it fit the size of the container. So I wanna change the, the font size so that it fits the container size. I'm sure you've seen something like this before. Let me just bump this up to a size that actually makes sense. So cool, that looks pretty good. I'm sure you've seen something like, like this before on like fancy awards websites and stuff like that, where they have like these big blocks of text that act almost as watermarks in the background. Um, and if you just wanted, you know, one static piece of text, Obviously, you could just find a responsive unit and set it to that and not have to worry about it. But what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to change the text. So say to just text. And then I want to be able to automatically change the font size in comparison with that. So for instance, say I just took the big off. Maybe it's 900 pixels now or something. Nope, that's too big. Let's try, you know, 700 pixels. Okay, that's too small. Let's try 800 pixels. Maybe still a little bit too big. Let's go with 750. Cool. To me, that's close enough. So... The new font size for this is 750. And I want to be able to have an algorithm that does this for me. Now, if you were to just kind of think about how you might do this, the, the first algorithm you might think about would probably look something like this. Let me move these other little arrows out of the way. We don't need those yet. So pretend, go you know, dot, dot, dot. And then what did we get to? 750. So it's, yeah, say we just had this big kind of range of numbers. We just start at one and we set our text font size to one and then compare the size of the font with the size of the container, right? So we would take our text like up here, set its font size to one. Now it's super, super tiny. And we would say, is this wider than our wrapping container? Well, obviously not. So we're gonna change the font size to two. Or in this case, we're just gonna move our little pointer and we're gonna say, okay, we'll increase our little loop. Is the font size two big enough? No, is three big enough? And we're just gonna keep kind of going through this loop until eventually we see, okay, 800 is the biggest we can make this text without the text size now being larger than the size of the screen. And this will totally work, but it's very inefficient, right? Because you know the smaller, the less characters that you have, like if this was just a T, and the larger the screen is, the more loops you have to do. You could eventually get to a point where it's like, oh, I need to loop thousands of times just to find this one font size. And that's not particularly efficient, right? So what we can do instead is something that is a little more human. And actually, I just kind of did this conceptually the first time that I sized that first piece of text. So whenever we had, big text in here. I think I started at a font size of 200, something like that. And what you'll notice I didn't do is I didn't have a font size of 200 and go, was 201 big enough? No. Well, what about 202? Right? And this would be stupid. If you saw me sitting here doing it, so you'd be like, you're an idiot. It's obviously nowhere close to big enough. What I actually did is I went significantly higher, right? I went to say 600. Oops, that's 60. 600. And then I went, okay, no, 600 is way too big. So let's go back down by quite a bit. Let's do like 400. Okay, 400 is pretty close. We'll pretend like that's what we actually ended up on. So 400 is where I went. And what I'm doing is I'm going low and then I'm going high and then I'm going somewhere in the middle, right? And if you've done your algorithms and data structures before, this is gonna look a lot like binary search. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So if you've never done binary search before, we can just look at a little example of this. I'm gonna remove my 800 here and move my arrows around. And the way that we can implement binary search is gonna look something like this. So we'll start with one pixel as our kind of lower bound and some high number, I just have six here, so it's easy to look at, but we're actually gonna do say 2,500 pixels as our upper bound. And we're gonna start by selecting some value in the middle. So we're gonna go, or directly in the middle, directly in the middle in this case, and we're gonna round down, so we'll say three. And then what we can do is say is three pixels bigger, is setting our text to three pixels rather, bigger than the size of our screen, or is it smaller than the size of our screen? If it's smaller than the size of our screen, then we can take our left pointer and move it all the way up to here, because we already know that this is too small, right? And we can move this pointer out of the way. This pointer will now go to the middle of these two numbers, so between four and six, and say, is five too small or too big? If it's too small, then we'll do the same thing again. We'll kind of move our pointer up over here. And if it's too big, we'll take this pointer and we'll move it to here. And our condition here is just gonna be that while the right pointer 
is larger than the left pointer. So over to the right, to the right of our left pointer, we're just gonna keep kind of doing this binary splitting of our range. And what we're eventually going to end up on is whatever the optimal value is. So we'll say, hey, five is too big. We're gonna go to four and go to four. If four is too small, then we're gonna go over here. And if, or if uh, it's too big, we're gonna move this way, right? And eventually what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that max pointer and that is going to be our answer, which in this case might be three pixels. Obviously you'd have to have a lot of text for it to be three pixels, but that is the idea. Now I have actually implemented a version of this and I just wanna show you guys what it looks like. So we'll see, I have this text, fit text to container. And as I change the size of my screen, it changes in size relative to the size of the screen. Just looking really quick at what I have in here, I'm using React. I have two refs, one for my container, and then this span in here is the text, and that has a ref on it as well. I am calling this as soon as this component mounts, and then I'm recalling it on any resize events. One thing that could be a, a slight optimization to this is instead of using pixels, using viewport width. I'm not doing that in this case, mainly just because a single viewport width constitutes many pixels. And you, you could use fractional viewport widths, but I thought it was a little bit more confusing. So instead I'm just calling on resize and recalling this function. But anyways, that's kind of against the point. The thing that we actually wanna look at is this function right here. So again, whenever we actually mount our component, we're going to call this function and we'll go through the basics first. So the first thing we're gonna do, let me actually bump this up in size a little bit, is grab a reference to both our container and to our text. And the reason is we want to be able to compare the sizes of those. We want to be able to update the font size of our text. Going down a little bit, you'll see one of the first things I'm doing here is grabbing that width of our container. And then I'm setting a minimum and a maximum font size, just like I was talking about a second ago. That's kind of like those little, those little arrows on the left and the right. So our left is going to be one pixel and our right is 2,500 pixels. I'm kind of grabbing this arbitrarily, but that seemed like it was big enough for pretty much any use case. I've added some logs here. Let me collapse these. And this is kind of where all of the actual magic is happening. Like we were saying, while the minimum value, so this is less than or equal to the maximum value or this, we're going to do our little binary splitting. So first we're gonna grab that middle value. In this case, the first middle value is uh, 1250, right? Halfway between one and 2500. We'll then update our text's font size to match whatever that value is. And if the text's width after being updated is less than or equal to the container's width, then we will update our left pointer, which is currently one, to whatever the middle point is plus one. So this is kind of the same thing we just saw a second ago with those little pointers. And if that's not the case, then we're gonna take the right pointer or the maximum pointer and move it to the left or the middle point minus one. Finally, after all of this is done, we're going to take the smaller of those two, which should be max kind of counterintuitively, but think about the fact that this while loops condition is going to break only after max is left less than min and we'll update our text font size to match whatever that is. I know this is a little bit confusing. So again, I have these kind of little console logs in here so we can follow it along. Let me make this a little bigger and we'll actually look at what these logs look like. So here is an example. Anything under these little dashes right here or this, this last run after I did my resize and we're starting with a min of one and a max of 2,500. So looking at this again up here, a minimum of one pixel and a maximum of 2,500 pixels. What we're gonna do is we're going to take our text and we're gonna set it to 2,500 pixels. That's happening right here. And we're going to then check if 2,500 pixels is too big or too small. In this case, it's too big. So we're going to take middle, this middle value and set it to max, right? So we're going from 1,250 right here to 1249 over here. And then we can just kind of continue down this pattern. So we'll see this is too big, 625 pixels too big, 312 is too big, 156 is too big, 78 is actually now too small because we'll notice we'll go from 78 and then we're updating our minimum value. And this just kind of continues to go, right? So 117 becomes the new max, or 97 becomes kind of the new min, et cetera, et cetera, until eventually we find out that the output value, now comparing this, remember our end state is while min is less than max, thus why my little, my max value and my final values is less than my min, is going to be the largest value that we can actually set for our pixel size that will scale to the full size of the screen. You can see this run again as I kind of update this. So if I make it bigger, obviously the maximum value is gonna be bigger that we actually output. If I make it smaller, it's going to be smaller. And that's the idea. Now, what I want you to see really is just how many times this took to run compared really with this output max value. So it should take just about the same amount of times to run each time, given we have the same upper and lower bound. So this is taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 loops to actually loop from our, our starting state to find our end state. But the output is 119, right? And this can just get bigger and bigger. Obviously my, my window is not very big right now. So this could go up to 
a lot, or even if we change the text. So let's do that. Let's change from fit text to container to, oops, let's just go to fit text. This is going to have to be a bigger font size. Yeah, there we go. Get a little bigger again. And now the maximum, like what we actually end up outputting is 363 pixels, but this still only took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 while loops to kind of find that value. As opposed to if we did this linearly, starting from one pixel, it would have taken 363 loops. And again, this just scales linearly while this binary search is going to scale logarithmically. Anyways, really all that my point is with this is there's always use cases. You can find them in the weirdest spots or just thinking about the efficiency of the code that you're writing is going to help you write better, cleaner, faster code. Anyways, I think that was really the whole point. I hope this was helpful. Um, the code for this, by the way, is in the description if you want this for whatever reason. And uh, yeah, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.